Once on the program, our focus was on the gas potentials of the country. In that episode of the program, it was revealed that Nigeria is a natural gas country. Going by the country's geological survey, Nigeria gas reserve is put at about 203 trillion standard cubic feet, while the United States of America Geological Survey puts her natural gas reserve at about 600 trillion standard cubic feet. It is also on record that natural gas has been certified to be one of the friendliest sources of energy. The reasons given are that gas is cheap and is environmentally friendly. The question then is how far has the country gone in the utilization of this source of energy? What laws, policies and efforts have the government put in place to make natural gas affordable to the populace and the industries? All these we'll be looking at in this edition of the program after our usual DPR tidbits. M. Suleiman, welcome. Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Shibaju has appealed to the international community not to block adequate financing for gas projects in Nigeria and other developing countries. Professor Shibaju made this remark at a meeting with a delegation of the European Union Commission led by its Executive Vice President, Mr. Valdez Dombrovskis, on the transition to net zero emission where he said Nigeria will explore the caveat in the EU green energy financing instrument to seek better ways of financing gas projects in the country. The vice president stated that what we see is a growing trend among developed financial institutions to withdraw from fossil fuel investment and recently the World Bank's decision to seize funding of upstream oil and gas development. He observed that the new restrictions on financing downstream developments appear to be given considerations by some countries in the West. Professor Shibajo is of the opinion that as well intended as some of these actions may be, it is clear to the government that they would disregard the importance of gas as a means of urgently addressing energy poverty for Nigeria and other developing countries as ours. The Department of Petroleum Resources DPR has clarified the process it uses for accounting for crude production in the country, noting that most incidents relating to oil theft occurs from the land terminals. A statement issued by the Deputy Director and Head Public Affairs Unit, DPR, Mr. Paul Osu, said the Director and Chief Executive Officer, DPR, Engineer Sarki Awalu, made the clarification while speaking before the House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on Crude Oil Theft in Abuja. Engineer Awalu told the committee, chaired by Honorable Peter Akpatasin, that the Department of Petroleum Resources is the agency of government saddled with the responsibility of monitoring crude oil production and lifting. The DPR helmsman said, and I quote, the hydrocarbon accounting in DPR starts from the well. Once you drill a well, you need to have what is called a maximum efficiency rate, MER, to know the quantity of crude oil that will be produced. The volume accounting starts from that point. He further said the methodologies used in hydrocarbon accounting are static and dynamic measurements. End of quote. Now, he disclosed that Nigeria has 30 terminals, with five of them being on land. The director said the land terminals are where the theft of crude occurs, as most producers use pipelines to transport their crude oil into the terminals. Chairman, Ad Hoc Committee of the House of Representatives, Peter Patterson, said the effect of crude oil theft could not be overemphasized, adding that it was the responsibility of all patriotic Nigerians to put to an end this menace. He however praised the efforts of the department in putting to an end the ugly incidents of crude theft. 
This is a special announcement from the Department of Petroleum Resources. Do not keep petrol in jerry cans inside your rooms. Ensure that it is kept well outside the living environment and away from children. Avoid using your cell phone in petrol filling stations during refueling of your car. It can cause spark and ignite fire. Do not smoke or use naked light where petrol is being stored or sold. Turn off your car engine at filling station when buying fuel in your tank. Avoid filling your generating set with petrol when the engine is still running. Always ensure that the engine is switched off. Ensure that when pouring petrol into a container, it is done in a ventilated area and in safe manner. For more information, visit the nearest DPR office or our website www.dpr.gov.ng. The country's natural gas is said to be more than her crude oil reserve. Our proven gas reserves today is put at 203 trillion standard cubic feet, making it the world's ninth largest reserves and number one in Africa. The life index of this reserve stands at about 75 years. Though earlier I fled, what has the government done to utilize this environmentally friendly and cheap source of energy? A background report will give you a little insight into all the efforts over the years and the Department of Petroleum Resources' role in this drive. Let's see. Nigeria's natural gas reserve is huge, ninth in the world and the first in Africa. Since the production of crude oil in the country in 1957, natural gas has been flared because it is associated gas, which means the gas is incidental. In other words, the gas is produced while producing crude oil. Meanwhile, several efforts have been made by the federal government to put into use this source of energy which the nation is well endowed with. It is often said that Nigeria is a gas nation, which means that Nigeria has more gas than crude oil. But this rich in liquid, low sulfur and low carbon dioxide product has been flared since the beginning of crude oil production in the country in spite of several laws and incentives offered to the multinational oil companies to bring down the rate of gas flare. Most of these laws and policies were enacted by successive federal governments. First were the gas flare laws. This was followed by the construction of the AFAM power plant, the first gas-powered power plant and the product of Shell companies in Nigeria. This was followed by the company's supply of gas to Aba industrial area. Next was the Trans Escravos Lagos Pipeline System ELPS built in 1989. It was to supply gas from Escravos in Niger Delta area to Igme Power Plant near Lagos. It consumes about 360 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. Subsequently, this pipeline also supplies gas to Delta Power Plant at Uheli, Wari Refining and Petrochemical Company at Wari, the West African Portland Cement, Wapco Plants at Shagamu and Iwikuru. The same gas pipeline supplies gas to industries at Ikorudu and City Gate in Ikeja, Lagos. Since the emergence of Nigeria Independent Power Plant NIPP, Iwekuru Lagos Pipeline System has become the major gas supply artery to the power plants in the country. This pipeline, which starts at Escravos Gas Plant, EGP, is operated by Chevron Nigeria. It has 680 million cubic feet per day capacity. The EGP facilities deliver 215 million standard cubic feet per day to the domestic gas market by Escravos Lagos Pipeline. Part of 170 million standard cubic feet per day is transferred from Escravos to Agbara Industrial Layout onward to West African Gas Pipeline that supplies Bene, Togo and Ghana. It is better known as the Trans-West Africa Gas Pipeline. Other consumers from this pipeline include Ehovo Power Plant, Omotosho 1 and 2 Power Plants and Saple Power Plant. 
Olorun Shugu 1 and 2 pipelines also take gas from this pipeline. Escravos Lagos Pipeline System also supplies Giregu 1 and 2 power stations. This is by its T at Obe. It is better known as Giregu Pipeline. This pipeline also supplies Ajakuta Steel Mills and Dangote's Obajana Cement. It forms the core extension of the Abuja Kaduna Kano AKK Pipeline. This pipeline will also serve as the backbone of the proposed Trans Sahara Gas Pipeline. Other projects, natural gas is supplied to include the aluminium smelting plant at Ikorabasi, the LME petrochemical plant, LME fertilizer plant, and the Escravos LNG Chevron gas plant meant for export. Many gas producing plants contribute to this Ewekoro to Lagos pipeline that tees off to Giregu pipeline. They include Odidi gas plant operated by Nekonde with actual capacity of 40 million standard cubic feet per day gas. Uturugu gas plant, it has the capacity to produce about 360 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. However, there is an ongoing upgrading of this facility to produce 510 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. There is also Oben gas plant operated by Seplat. It has the capacity to produce about 300 million standard cubic feet of gas per day. The Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas NLNG is about to begin the construction of Train 7. The agreement was signed in May 2020 and it will cost $3 billion. Domestic gas utilization is also being promoted by the Department of Petroleum Resources. Some modular refineries are producing LPG for domestic utilization. It is also on record that a huge refinery being constructed in Lagos will produce LPG for domestic use. In addition to all these, LPG bottles are springing up in many corners of the country, while many filling stations are gradually installing LPG refill bottles for house, cylinders and automobiles. There is a serious campaign championed by the Department of Petroleum Resources to convert vehicles from PMS and AGO to use of gas. Plans are also underway to pipe gas directly to estates and homes in Lagos, Abuja and some well-planned cities and towns in the country. Over the years, the Department of Petroleum Resources DPR has been carrying out its mandate of supervision and regulation of the Nigerian oil and gas industry, the cornerstone of our country's economy. It has built an enviable platform with highly trained manpower to carry out these responsibilities that cut across the value chain of the upstream, midstream and downstream of the industry. Today, DPR and its leadership is still bringing up new and excellent innovations to see to the optimum performance of the industry, bringing down the cost of production, increasing revenue to government and the population. Our service instruments of licenses, permits and approvals enable business and create opportunities for investors in the Nigerian oil and gas industry. Yes, DPR is here for you. For more information on DPR, please visit our website www.dpr.gov.ng, Twitter at DPR Hotline and Instagram at DPR Hotline. Telephones plus 234-1279-0000 and 1903-7150. What a detailed report. And I hand you over to Femi Fafiebi for our interview segment of the program for more on gas utilization. Yes, we have to make full use of this God-given resource for the benefit of all Nigerians and even non-Nigerians. Femi, you take it over from here. Deepening the use of gas through its adequate supply has been on the front burner of uh, DPR's agenda for quite a number of years and I'm sure that even for Nigerians out there uh, the use of gas you know has become uh, so very important particularly looking at it from the 
domestic point of view in recent times. And so this evening on uh, the interview segment of the program, uh, it's my pleasure to host uh, the Assistant Director, Domestic Gas Supply and Utilization in the Department of Petroleum Resources in the person of Mr. Steve Ayuba, who is here to help us uh, thrash out you know, very important points. It's my pleasure to welcome you, sir. Thank you, Femi. Straight away, I'll just start by asking. Uh, there are various projects lined up to utilize available gas, you know, which the country has, like the Ajakuta, Kaduna, and Kano. We have AKK pipeline, gas to power, domestic gas utilization, gas to vehicles, LNG, train seven, and many more. So the question is, do we uh, really have available gas production to sustain all of these? As we're all aware, Nigeria is extensively blessed with hydrocarbon resources. And hydrocarbon resources are then clearly demarcated into two main streams. That's crude oil. We've always been known more as a crude oil uh, producing nation. But more importantly, you're going to find that Nigeria is heavily endowed with gas resources. So to answer your questions directly, yes, we have more than enough resource of gas. The production that is currently being streamed into uh, the gas market in Nigeria can progressively be increased as the need clearly becomes evident, but we are greatly endowed with gas resource as a nation. Who is the author of the National Gas Expansion Program, NGIP? And, uh, you know, this is necessary. I mean, we need to, to know this because uh, we understand it is geared towards massive utilization of natural gas in the country. Is that so? Starting from sometimes or uh, in the mid 2000s, I mean, if you've been following uh, the trends of development in the <clears throat> oil and gas industry, you will find that progressively government has been giving more emphasis on the development of gas for all the various uses that we can actually put our gas to. So the owner of National Gas Expansion Program is actually the federal government, but the person that is clearly responsible for that, the Honorable Minister of State, Petroleum Resources, is then really the owner. He inaugurated uh, the committee uh, on the 16th of January 2020 and then he oversees every uh, strategic uh, implementation that is required to be carried out uh, for NGEP. And I must say that NGEP in less than 18 months have done extensively well. Now, uh, we understand that one of the promoters of um, the National Gas Expansion Program has said that it is aimed at an uh, auto gas scheme as well as a deepening domestic use of gas, and that this project will actually create about 12.5 million jobs. So uh, can you explain to us how, pos how this is possible? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm smiling because, uh, so the reality <clears throat> on the use of gas for a lot of uh, developmental purposes in this nation is really become very apparent. Now, if you look at all of those programs, there are clearly some enablements that will be required to make those programs highly successful. Each of those enabling requirements will then be offering Nigerians an opportunity to create a lot of jobs. So we take the autogas uh, sector, for example. Uh, before you get your car that is currently running only on petrol or diesel, to begin to use gas, you will have to carry out some conversion. So you need to convert, convert that engine into becoming an engine that will power on dual fuel. For converting a lot of the vehicles that we need in Nigeria, averagely or modestly now, we're looking at having at least over 500,000 technicians that will be trained and that effort has already started. Now, so that's just conversion. But then having to then bring in the kids, 
have all the gas supply chain elements that will then enable the availability of all the facilities that are required to then allow uh, the Enger programs to run. You will find that you will need much more jobs in that segment. And modestly, uh, in Engev, we have estimated actually that over 5 million jobs can be created in that. So the entire uh, supply chain that will then ensure that all of those four segments of Engev are adequately supplied with all that is needed will naturally simply create over 5 million jobs. Then when you add the indirect uh, engagements that all of these industries will be having, then you will find that very easily uh, this new drive that the federal government uh, is ensuring through NGEP uh, that will be able to create more than 12 million jobs in the short to medium term. Once this value chain of which is like at the end of the, oil, of the gas value chain, it's very active. It's going to create a lot and a lot of jobs. What about gas supply to aluminum smelt, the aluminum smelting plant at uh, Eko Abasi? What is the situation on that right now? In the year 2021, um, we clearly have the demand uh, for this company uh, adequately captured amongst uh, some of the gas off-takers. But from our records, uh, the domestic gas supply and utilization team, uh, absolutely ASCON, it's one of the companies that we are set to supply gas to them starting from 2021. Tell us about one of the biggest gas utilization projects in the uh, country, which is fertilizer. How many of these projects are on now and uh, how many are we targeting in the nearest future? Uh, you will find that currently we have, um, we have a capacity for a fertilizer plant that is taking about 158 million scope. The idea of uh, piping gas to homes was tinkered with at the time, yeah. you know, by some stakeholders in the industry, particularly for urban centers like Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja and the rest. Uh, does DPR have a concrete, uh, you know, plan to do anything about this? For the Department of Petroleum Resources, uh, if you've also been following a lot of some of the recent developments that we've brought uh, into the industry, you will find that we have a regulatory regime now that regulates what is called reticulation. Now, what's reticulation? Reticulation is just a means of distributing gas in, for example, a housing estate through the use of gas. So you are a gas supplier, you can then set up a storage around uh, that estate or an industrial area and then supply your gas through the use of pipelines. So also speaking from uh, NGEP, you'll find that quite a lot of extensive uh, stakeholder consultation has been done around that particular aspect of uh, ensuring that gas is distributed. Uh, the, the program has spoken to estate owners association across Nigeria in this line. Uh, the program has engaged uh, builders, surveyors, everyone that is in the value chain of providing homes, yes, uh, to ensure that we have uh, the guidelines that is required, the building codes that are needed, the safety requirements that are needed so that reticulation can then become a reality. So DPR has actually started. It's not that we're thinking about it. The guidelines are there. You can go to our website. Uh, if you need any further information, we can then take you through some of the more technical details that you need. Quickly, it occurred to me that we, we might like to know uh, if the arrangement to uh, the technical knowledge that will be required you know to convert engines like you you know explained is already available there are a lot of vehicles that are already using gas as fuel there there's already huge capacity in country for conversion of vehicles and generators 
and any prime mover that actually uses uh, a lot of the prime movers that so when I say prime movers like your generators like your cars yeah, yeah that yeah, use PMM. they can always be powered by gas so already that practice is uh, very reasonably matured in the country that capacity is there uh, what we need to do is to then really expand it yeah expand uh, capacity around proficiency of Nigerians actually doing that because those jobs really have to be created for Nigerians. Expand capacities around service providers that are willing to then go into that. And already we're receiving a lot, a lot of inquiries. Hi, uh, well, I think uh, this is about it, uh, dear viewer. Uh, we've just come to the end of this interview segment and I want to thank very much the Assistant Director of Domestic Gas Supply and Utilization at the Department of Petroleum Resources, DPR, Mr. Steve Ayuba, for your time. We appreciate you so much and we hope to have you as a guest on this uh, program sometime very soon. Thank you for uh, having me. It was a great it's pleasure. A pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, I hand you over right now back to Suleiman. Thank you for watching. I am Femi Fafi over here. Well, we have come to the end of today's program. We'll come your way again for other interesting topics. You do keep a date. Many thanks for being such a nice company. I'm Sulaiman. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>